is my very first uh, JavaScript uh, conference, so I don't know what to expect. I spend usually my, my time with uh, Java backends, and um, at the beginning I did both. So I started with JDK 1.0 and JavaScript in Netscape browser, was the uh, very first one was LiveScript. And what I did back then is uh, basically how it's called on mouse over buttons. So we replaced a uh, lots of buttons to have nice effects, and then they were replaced by CSS. So those were my very start, I think 1995 with uh, JavaScript. Then th we did some uh, JavaScript server-side work on Netscape SuitSport server, but no one liked, liked that back then. It was not very cool to have JavaScript on the server. It changed a bit, uh, so we had to migrate everything to Java again. So I spent a lot of time with Java, and on front-end I could ignore JavaScript for a long time, because in Java we had uh, different technologies. But um, uh, what we had is, uh, you know, JSF and uh, struts at the very beginning, and uh, no. And uh, what's changed? What's changed was, um, I would say, uh, three, uh, three years ago, we got uh, the modern JavaScript. It's called uh, ES6. For me, it looks like Java, actually, almost exactly like Java. I know this is not very politically correct to say that, but uh, it's just actually Java for me. It is so, it is so similar that actually if I spend too much, too much uh, time with JavaScript, I do syntax uh, errors in, in Java. And what also changed is uh, more and more of my clients are not, not satisfied with, I would say, how to call it, uh, with the uh, constant migration problems. And um, also, uh, usual Java developers don't necessarily like JavaScript. So this changes a little bit, but uh, it, 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 it costs a lot of time you know, to convince them to do something with uh, JavaScript. And uh, what I notice is that uh, for two or three years, you can actually uh, write a decent JavaScript code with lots of fun in the, in, in the same, exactly the same way we did in Java for 15 or 20 years. Now the question to you, uh, who actually knows Java? It's amazing what they're doing here. And, uh, <laughs> and who uh, don't know Java at all? And the remaining part they do and do not. It's probably me because I try to learn everything in Java and still not done. So um, I actually I have to apologize. I created some slides not to forget things because I had uh, um, a, uh, a um, presentation with my clients. I created some slides would like to, to, to use them. Usually I leave the script part, so I just uh, focus on Java. Sorry. I just focus on Java, not on JavaScript, but uh, I have still fun coding all the time. So, um, um, yeah. That's about me. Now, um, there are some things. And what are web standards? And uh, I try to explain to Java developers, because say, okay, look, we have web standards, exactly the same what we have in Java. We have a JCP, JS, RS, and whatever. And what we get out of that, basically, I th I, I, I'm not very familiar with .NET, but it seems like .NET uh, and Java developers are similar. We have one resource to look at, and everything is in one place. And for me, web standards is you go to Mozilla Developer Network and search for it. Um, and this is the first very appealing thing for actually all server-side or I uh, would say enterprise developers because uh, whatever they, they, they have to know is in one place. And I don't know whether you know that uh, this MDN thing, if you search for... Um, M uh, sorry. This was uh, MDN, MDN, uh, Google and Samsung and so forth, you will find a page where two years ago Everyone committed, I will just, wait a second, this was a mistake. Everyone committed to bring, uh, that the um, MDN becomes the canonical truth of web standards. So now, at what, what web standards are, is the things which are in the browser without any third-party developer, uh, developers, uh, dependencies. This is what, uh, how I explain it to my clients. So look, whatever's in the browser without any script import or whatever. Um, okay. Why it's important to my client, uh, web standards, is not important at all, but what they don't like is migrations. Because the life cycle of the project is completely different from the life cycle of a framework. And um, I don't know whether you know, um, Blink Tech died. This is the only thing which was deprecated, but Marquee still works. So, um, so it means uh, most of the applications built in 1999 will still work right now, which is actually great news, right? So first, to developers, what it means for me is, if I'm searching, for instance, MDN fetch, I prepending fetch, I'm pretty sure I get the uh, fetch API, for instance, which replaces already, in your world, lots of frameworks. 
By the way, uh, your world, my world, uh, we have a, an evil magazine called Java Magazine in Germany. This is, uh, this is uh, the organizer, it has something to do with it here. And what the Java developers are doing, they're reading the articles and then whatever is in there, they're using in projects. So the project gets bigger and bigger and bigger and at one point of time they say Java is not usable, we have to do something else. And I have the suspicion that JavaScript developers are even worse. So uh, you had the issue with the left padding or uh, in, in uh, NPM. So there are lots of dependencies and I installed once Angular and I find out that uh, 35,000 JavaScript files were downloaded to have one button on the screen. And um, I say, okay, this is interesting. The question is, can we do something different? And I think we absolutely can. What you also know, um, pro hopefully know, I, I don't know, is um, that uh, there is no more uh, Internet Explorer or Edge. So the new Edge is Chrome, right? So this is, uh, I would say, old news. But what it basically means is so that we have, sadly, two browsers, uh, Chrome and Firefox, and both are absolutely compatible. So what it means, what I will show you right now, will work without any polyfills everywhere, okay? Except Opera Mini and so forth. So, I mean, uh, patching stuff like with jQuery is no more necessary. So I think this is old news for me, at least, and for you as well. So you are all JavaScript gurus, so um, don't have to tell you this. So, but this is for Java developers, MDN search, whatever you find here is usually a web standard. Um, so framework versus libraries. What I think is that the importance on framework decreases. I wanted actually to write frameworks are dead, but nothing really dies. They will be forever. But uh, in, my, in my opinion, they are dead, and you can consider them as less popular than, or they will decrease. And what will happen, we get more and more libraries, which are more important, and actually component libraries, right? So, uh, for instance, uh, yesterday we, we had on a client side, so what do you do with tables, right? So we, we wanted to have a nice table with sorting and filtering, so we will use this table component without any framework or date picker. It's just crazy to build your own date picker, right? So you can choose, pick and choose component, but you should not be depending on a framework. So this is the future. Um, or uh, uh, not future, this is, this is reasonable. Whether this future or not is mostly depending on speakers, marketing, and all other stuff which you cannot influence, right? So, um, so this is uh, frameworks versus libraries, and uh, the browsers become more and more portable. What also happened with browsers is it's called evergreen browsers, so there is no more Chrome whatever. We have Chrome 77 or 79, and uh, no one knows actually what the version is, so all the browsers get patched behind the scenes, so uh, what we did 20 years ago, like if agent version, whatever, doesn't matter. So we, everyone gets the newest version of the stuff. Agreed? If not, please you know, uh, say, uh, I'm not agree with you, you're a stupid Java developer, we do this completely different, because I have five slides left and I will start to hack. So this is actually the idea. And um, frameworks become less relevant, in my eyes, that this is just politically correct. So, um, and uh, this is a keynote. Um, um, uh, slide from, from SAP, while well, they're mi migrating their own, uh, their own framework to web components, and what they say is in 2014, they had lots of frameworks, and in 2019, they focus on uh, browser standards, and only a thin part, custom elements, are the SAP date picker, for instance, and this is open source, so they open source the whole thing this year, and we use already, in a, some startup project, if you search for SAP UI5 web components, you will find the components on GitHub from SAP, which is amazing. And um, you go here and uh, get started. By the way, it's great internet here. Uh, on Java conferences, there's almost nothing, you know, so on the JavaScript, so we have great internet. So we have here, um, this is like a uh, date picker from SAP, works great, and this is a web component. So you can just take it, and we're already using this without being depending on SAP framework. We just use the web component, and this thing is called custom element. So, and this is a browser standard, and actually, all the frameworks are supporting this right now. Even, the, I, I don't know what they are aware of Ionic, this Ionic framework, they migrated to web components. Okay, so I think this is the future. Questions? No questions? I don't know how interactive you are. So in, ja in Java talks, I get lots of questions, so I don't know whether you are uh, shy or not, you know, it depends on the cu culture. So. Um, this SAP slide is important for my clients. Like, look, if SAP you know, throws a framework away, now it's time you know, in your company to delete the frameworks as well. So this is actually my argumentation. I don't like frameworks a lot, so as you probably noticed. And um, so web components, so ENG started as a bank, st started with this, uh, I would say, three years ago. So if you search for ENG web components, they do everything with web components. And uh, Salesforce, uh, also recently, they had uh, uh, Lightning components, but they start with components a little bit 
framework around that, which I don't think is necessary, but as well, SAP already on YouTube was uh, rewritten with uh, web components. And actually, all my current JavaScript projects, as this is what I do uh, right now, we're deleting the frameworks, going with standards, developers like it, and, and my clients as well. And the, th the, the, the interesting part is, you don't have to relearn, you know, if you try you now to migrate from Angular to Ember, for instance, have fun, or f from Angular to React, or from React to Ember. Um, it's actually mission impossible. It's in Java, we don't even have it. So, like, we have a complete different framework. So, um, in Java, Spring and Java E, for instance, they don't like each other, but they are very similar. But in, in, in JavaScript, people don't like each other, but they are completely different. So, the framework, right? This is a uh, completely different language. Um, okay. So, third party libraries. I don't know whether you know Vardin. Vardin is for, for Java developers, it's a bless because you can very quickly. Uh, create nice applications which looks nice. No Java developers have uh, no. Uh, uh, I'm I'm one, right? It's really hard to to fit the colors. Everything is pink and flashy and gold. So this is what we usually do. With Vardin, everything looked reasonable, and uh, the cool story is Vardin created the, the old component set, which is also open source. We use, for instance, Vardin Grid, Vardin Date Picker. So you can just use just the JavaScript components without the Java part. Okay. So if you search for Vardin components. Vardin components, you will find the uh, Vardin components, a library of components, which we also use a lot. And um, they are open source, and you can also buy some. Um, depends what, for instance, the grid is great with virtual scrolling. They are reusing, uh, this is not Java, this is the HTML, and this is pure HTML component. You only have to, um, uh, to, to convert the named NPM module to, uh, to a relative module, the only thing you have to do. What I use for that is called Rollup. It's the one of the view tools we are doing to convert once uh, a proprietary, uh, I would say, NPM um, dependency to ES6 module dependency. And by the way, with NPM 12, this is on the horizon, it is going to be completely resolved. NPM 12 will also support ES6 modules, what we support in browsers, then not even this is needed. So what I'm talking about, on our developers' machines, we don't even have NPM installed. So there is no processing, no Babel, nothing. Okay, which is actually for Java developers a bless. JavaScript developers are a little bit suspicious. Like, what they are doing here? There's nothing, it just works. I'm like, okay, this was 20 years ago how I started with internet. There's also no, no compiling of JavaScript on my, on, on my machine, right? So, um, jQuery, even XGS, this was like a very popular framework called Senchana. XGS, they have a third party component, so you can just have an, 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 an table from XJS without being depending on XJS, right? So, and Prime is Prime Faces. So all the JSF from Java are available as web components. Telerik, and I wrote jQuery because this is super trick. So if you are building um, components, which I'll show you in a second, you have complete control over DOM. If you have complete uh, control over DOM, there is no virtual DOM in place, you can absolutely use all jQuery components. For instance, if my clients need, you know, decent table, data tables, you know it pro probably, 20 years old, uh, tabul tabulator.info, so you can just, you know, use the tabulator, nice grid, um, uh, wrap it around a web component, and here we go. So it's very easy to, to have, you know, uh, how to call it, higher order components. On tables are tables, date pickers, trees are not easy to implement. Okay? Questions? At least one. No question. So, productivity. What means for us very important learned once? This is boring, you know, to learn uh, invention from third party developers who invite a framework and uh, after two years you have to relearn everything because someone else has a bet better idea. If you stick with the standards, it is usually good enough for most projects we do. Let's say 80% rule. If you're building games, you have Facebook or whatever, it will probably don't work for you. But um, not all my clients are Facebook or Twitter. Actually, none of my clients is Facebook or Twitter or Google. So it, it does matter. Absolutely, it does not matter. So um, no setup. What I usually do is one single tool browser sync, which I will launch in a second. It is, uh, it, it is actually it comes with all your CLIs. Angular CLI and React CLI come with browser sync behind the scenes. What it does is a watcher. It searches my JavaScript files and reloads the browser, period. This is the only thing we need. And no builds. We have no build locally. We have sometimes NPM on, the, on CI, on Jenkins in my case. Why? Because what we do is, we, uh, whatever components we like, we generate a view files with, uh, with the chunks. Uh, it's called code splitting. So we have you know, small code size. And we put it on a central server so that the browser can cache it. And we refer to our components. So we commit in a team, we would like to have this grid, this date picker, and moment.js. And whatever we need is then on the server once. And the cool story is, 
Now the browser can cache things, right? Because the URI never changes, and uh, it can, we can even preload the stuff to the browser. But the cool story is there is no setup on development machine. So for me, on the back end, it was very, very, uh, very important time to first commit or time to hello world. But in the front end, it's even more important. So I, meanwhile, I can set up the whole server, Java server, in 30 seconds, and if you give me a framework, we will need one hour to download the sources from the internet. It's already happened in the workshop. This is just crazy. It will never fly in Java that you, you had a X doc like 20 years ago. This is, this is the behavior of what I see in, your, in, in, in JavaScript frameworks right now. Okay, now, some workshops on Munich Airport. This was the last slide, so sorry. And uh, now I would like to code a little bit and show you what I mean by that, by web standards and how it feels like the, and the feeling. So, and um, it will be mostly Hello World, but with all technologies, web components, ES6, that you get a feeling how no frameworks feel like. And your job is to criticize me or find something which won't fly, is, I don't know, uh, not doable or whatever. Agreed? Yeah, very quiet. So, uh, junk is good because it means this is where I do my presentations and delete it afterwards. Everything else is for my clients. So, this is, I, um, yeah. Oh, um, you don't see anything. I think this was my fault with that, right? Okay. Now, set up web standards projects. Um, AGS, we are out there on the International JavaScript Conference. And what happens behind the scenes, it was a script which creates three files, Hello World uh, JavaScript, an empty CSS, and an HTML, which is very simple, no magic. I'm just too lazy you know, to create these th uh, three things over and over again, so I created a small script, copy, and uh, it happened. So there's no NPM, nothing, right? So, and you already see the browser is running behind the scenes, so if I change here something, it changes here. All Java developers are very excited. In your case, it's normal, right? So I mean, so um, so this is already. They say, "Wow, this is a, you know, rocket science." What they're doing? It's like, okay. Now, and this tool is called Browser Sync, and this is just uh, other JavaScript. So they they use uh, Express or Gulp Watch or whatever. But Browser Sync is nice. Browser Sync IO, because it comes as a binary. And it's installed globally. It's this binary. And if you go here and just say um, which browser sync, brow uh, b sync, this is my script. What it does is browser sync, watch source folder, and open Google Chrome. This is the only setup the developers need. Agreed? Now, web component. Let's create our own web components. So, uh, to make you more interactive, I do something like. Java rocks. Now it's just like what they are telling, you know, this is like a, a museum technology. So, no. X stands, um, X stands HTML element. So, um, now the question is, for Java developers, you know, how to know HTML element? What is it? And the cool story is, what, uh, first, you, you already see this is straight Visual Studio Code. We got kind of JS doc or Java doc. And um, MDN HTML, HTML element. And if you are here, so we are, uh, this is the MDN, we see uh, UML-like structure. We cannot say it's UML, but it looks like UML. And um, you know, I see here the class hierarchy node, event target. You see that everything has uh, uh, at event listener. And this is the hierarchy. And the cool story is you have to know, know it even if you are using frameworks. So you have to have a feeling about the DOM. It's not like what I'm showing you right now is additional knowledge. This is the base knowledge you should have. To, uh, to operate um, flexibly with frameworks. Agreed? So, now the next trick. If you are on the airplane or a train, you don't al always have internet. So there's cool website, devdocs.io, and this provides me all the Java docs, or Java docs, JS docs, or however you call it, offline. So now I can search here for a HTML element, and uh, I find this. And this is the first thing what developers re really like, they say, now we have a single you know, source of doc of truth, and uh, I don't have to use you know, to, to read 500 tutorials. Agreed? No. So challenges, at least one question, until I won't stop. You know? uh, otherwise, I will talk for eight hours. So now, the first web standard is a web br browser API is custom elements defined. So, and this is, comes with browsers. Good news, all browsers. 
So there is no polyfills needed for web components anymore. All browsers support uh, web components. So, and uh, the only thing which is very important to know, the name of a web component has to have a dash in it. Minus dash. Java rocks. Why? Because, um, because it cannot collide with the existing tags. That's the reason. Then I have to pass the Java rocks class here. And we have connected callback, which uh, for Java developers is say, OK, this is similar to post construct. And in Java's, for JavaScript developers, it is called when the browser um, shows the element, integrates the element with the DOM. And whatever you're doing with the DOM, you should DOM, uh, <laughs> you should DOM, you should do in connected callback. OK? Surprisingly, we have constructors as well. So I don't need the constructor right now, but it looks like this. So this is the code almost identical to Java, except the constructor would look, look differently. Now, connected callback. So what I can do, I can say this in HTML. Why to know? Because MDN docs. So in HTML, backticks. This is where Java developers get really excited because it comes in uh, Java 13, but it's not as powerful. Because what it can do is say, uh, message, uh, wake up. And uh, what I can do, I can use this as a template inside of this message. So, and uh, now I will also have to use it. So instead of using this, I do Java rocks. And uh, it doesn't work, of course. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. You are kind to me, and uh, now it works. Thank you very much. Um, Question so far? Yeah. But this is already you now the Java situation. So all the developers, they need a, a large font size. So JavaScript developers, they, they can use an eight point font size, you know? Perfect. So um, what it means is I have a wake up in HTML, and this, uh, the component is loaded here, recognized by the browser. And uh, I could use in HTML or in a text, of course. This is a part of the DOM. So, and. Um, Template comes with it, done. So uh, long story, it is not usable in, in enterprise projects. Why? Someone could uh, very easily hack that, because in a HTML, I could inject some evil JavaScript code to, as an event handler to, uh, for an image. And uh, for instance, and this is not what really flies uh, in enterprise or in, in more serious projects. So therefore, what we're usually doing is uh, we're using uh, lit HTML, for instance. So what you can do in JavaScript, you can say const ejs. EJS equals, for me, also looks perfectly like Java, first, second, and uh, looks like that. And I can say return uh, very secure template. So and this is secure because it does nothing. So now it's very secure template. And this is called a standard ES6 templates literals, so I can write my own template language. So it is a very bad idea to write something in your project. Therefore, we use something which is already done and established. And uh, what we use is lit HTML. This is a library from Google. And uh, this is what uh, was actually the rem reminder of, of Polymer. Lit HTML, HTML. And uh, it, is, it was, it, it fitted to a slide. So it's a, just a library. Actually, it comes with two methods, or two functions, sorry. Two functions, HTML and render. Uh, this HTML precompiles a template and render renders the templates. And it comes with uh, DOM diffing, uh, binding, and, um, and the question is, what happens if this disappears? I have to migrate again, yes. But there are similar libraries, like HyperHTML, and uh, Java, JavaScript is like, and 500 other uh, libraries, which are very, very similar. Actually, this was the first one. This is HyperHTML, and LitHTML is, uh, is the most popular one because it comes from Google. Now. Uh, what I, what I did, I have the library on my machine. It doesn't change very often. I would say three times a year. So therefore, I have a small script, lit HTML. And what it does is it copies this one file, or the folder in this case, to my uh, folder. Now, what happens in real world? In real world, as I told you, lit HTML, moment.js, and the tables are, are on our web server. We have one dedicated web server. You know, in, sadly, in my project, still Apache in most cases, but we could migrate this to Nginx or whatever is cool these days. Express or whatever you're using, doesn't matter. Okay? We only need a stable URI. This is the trick. Questions? Lit HTML. Lit, H, lit HTML 
So and now it's copied, and what was copied? The entire Node.js module without any preparation. I just copied this out of my, uh, I downloaded this as, as npm minus i uh, lit HTML and copied this, the whole thing. Now, what I can do right now is the following. Look at that. So I can now say, um, no, not yet. I will have to activate modules, which in Java are just imports, but modules. And this goes like that. I have modules activated without any framework. So with that, I can now go to, uh, to AppJS here and say import uh, HTML and render from, and uh, you say, great, as out of the box without any plugins, uh, code completion in Visual Studio Code and uh, lit HTML JS. And there are two fun functions which are exported, HTML render, and what I can do right now, I rewrite this a little bit and I can say uh, const template and by the way, we don't use var anymore. Var is old school. We have just const or let. Whenever possible, use const, and if not possible, use let. <laughs> so this is actually the advice. HTML, and um, and now I can say, let's say, let's say h2, h3, and uh, Duke rocks to make you even more angry because you don't have any dukes in JavaScript. So we have this, and uh, then render template and uh, this. So what it means now that the, uh, the, the template was rendered here. Now the question is, uh, first, is this more secure? Second, it's crazy fast. Why? Because even a uh, virtual DOM consumes memory. Th there is no virtual DOM. What it does, it computes changes, and we have DOM diffing without virtual DOM. This is the cool part. Now, what you get on top of it is a little bit syntactic sugar. So what I can easily do, I can say button, click, and if the button is clicked, then I can invoke a method or a uh, function, uh, sorry, uh, this on button clicked. And I need to close the button, click and uh, button. So we have this on button clicked and here is on button clicked. And what I can do is to say console lock and clicked. Oh, this is like this. So now switch and it works. So uh, what it means is, it is um, what we have, it will look like React.js, but it's completely based on standards except the lit HTML library, which is about 500 lines of code of JavaScript. Not 35,000 files of JavaScript. Okay? And, uh, and this library is a standard extension of JavaScript, of ES6. This is nothing, you know, Crazy. Questions? Yes. Yeah? The the oh, very, very good. We have, we learned about MDN, AS6 string literal, and uh, template literals. Now, now we are talking, and here somewhere is explained what it is. This is uh, tech templates. And this is the syntax, and this comes my tag, and this is explained. So, and what it means is, you have a function with three parameters, which is called, and you get, you know, all the placeholders with the static content here. And what Google does, they are parsing the content, and you know, they're escaping the evil stuff, and they also compute what really changed, and we have a crazy good performance without any DOM diffic. Cool. Most of the project using the inheriting from lit HTML, which we don't use because we are depending on the lit HTML element. We just use this. It's enough. Questions? Very good question. So, but this is ES6. This is very old, what I'm showing you. Nothing, nothing new here. Okay. So what if you would like to go to the server? So I saw everything, reactive programming, whatever. But actually, we would like to go to server, get some JSON, and display it on the screen. This is what I really do in my projects 80% of the time. So now, how it usually works, usually I would could ver hack for you a, a, back a Java backend, but it's pointless. So um, I have here, I have here, OSA server, it runs on port 3000, so localhost 3000, and, uh, or is it, should be, um, wait a second, hopefully it is, so we will see in a second. And uh, what I would like to have is to have the duke.json. 
and uh, Duke is a uh, name name is uh, Duke and Duke is very young let's say it's not really true but uh, let's say age 18 so it's a lie, but it looks like this. And now I would like to, to load this JSON from server, but usually it's a REST service. Skip that. Uh, REST service with cores installed. I don't have to install cores because the same domain. Agreed? So I would try to load it via port 3000 or whatever it is. So now, what we do in projects is, um, how much time do we have? Well, we have still time. So, uh, we would create in a folder here, and the folder is not here, rather than on the top level. And by the way, what I don't do, I don't copy the folders here in my source. Um, we uh, point uh, again wh what you can do you can load the modules via URI right so you are not forced to do this where is my component to do this you can load from an URI from a central server which is perfect viable in most companies and the cool story is if you use an URI the browser will cache the whole resource for you and you can even use uh, resource hints there's also a web standard called resource hints to pre-cache all the libraries and pre-render what you did even before. So uh, search for resource hints, MDN of course, is always web standard, right? So this is preloading content with, this is an old school, but very efficient. Questions? No questions? Very good. So um, what I wanted to do is to use a service. So now I can use a uh, uh, Duke fetcher, Duke fetcher, JS. And now I could use a class again, but I don't have to. I can just create a method, uh, fetch duke equals. I don't need any parameters, so I skip the parameters. And I would like to, to return the duke here. So what do we have out of the box available in our browsers in JavaScript, async, in Java would be asynchronous. Async methods, you can block in async methods. And, and async, why? Because they return promise for Java developers future, and promise is promise. So in Java, this is like promise is the proxy for future result. This is a promise. Okay? So, but promise are a little bit ugly to implement. So at least I don't like promises a lot. So if I found this, I think this is perfect. So now, sadly, without any frameworks, I can call the server now. And the method is called fetch. Available on all browsers, of course. Now, and um, Duke JSON. Now I can say, wait, uh, wait, until... I get the res response and say uh, response.json const uh, pale uh, duke and then um, await because it's also a J because this uh, parsing is also asynchronous part which is cool and then console log just for fun duke now and uh, it could even work so uh, load it from server so and now export, I have to export the fetch duke. Fetch duke. Now, in uh, the app.js, I will have to import the duke. So, import, uh, this looks like this, fetch duke uh, from, from uh, duke fetcher. So, and now, let's do this in uh, fetch duke in clicked. Fetch duke. So, and now if I do this, I see uh, Duke JSON. I just Duke J uh, JSON. And I think the problem is my port. Th no. Token. Where is the evil token? Duke JSON. This JSON, valid JSON, right? It says I cannot um, unexpected token C in JSON at position zero. Oh, Duke JSON. Let's see. I will just kill that. Uh, this is trivial now. So, do again. Clicked as. Fetch Duke Jason. <coughs> I hope this is the port. 
It cannot find, uh, find my Duke, which is uh, really sad. And I think, I know this, you see this? No one said this to me. Because, you, see, you know, the Java developer, we don't like Java, so let's see what he will do. The, f the problem was, it was outside my folder of my web server. And uh, hopefully now, we see name Duke 18. So it works. So sorry for that. You see, sometimes we even get some. Sometimes we even get errors in JavaScript, but it's not not very very often. So we have now we loaded the and parsed the Duke from a server with a web standard called Fetch, and of course we can pass JSON web tokens to the headers. Post, put, delete, everything is um, supported. How to know that? MDN uh, Fetch use I think uh, f using Fetch. And uh, if you would like to post, what you have to do is the first parameter here is the U URL, and then you have to say method post and the headers, for instance. If you would like to set, you know, bearer token, JSON web token, you can specify that. Now, the question is how to receive, you know, how to receive this is asynchronous, and we wouldn't like to block, so how to do this? There's another web standard called uh, events, custom events. So we can absolutely say, I have an event called uh, the Duke uh, event and new custom event and the custom event the name is uh, Duke and then what's also standardized is the payload and the payload has here a detail and the detail is whatever I like so uh, let's say payload is my Duke and uh, what's somehow important is to tell that I would whether this event bubbles yes or not and it should bubble it's always nice you have some bubbles and um, what a second so and then I have to say window window this is now uh, window dispatch event Duke and um, why you have to know this because uh, Duke event you see event Duke event why it is important because um, most of the custom elements you will download or buy they also emit the same events so there's nothing special with it um, they just creating the event this way and you can listen to these events and uh, by the way this Duke is um, let's say Duke event is okay for now so now we have the Duke event and what I could do here or I will do for now is I could actually subscribe to this event and say uh, window at event listener by the way this window is not necessary usually you have hierarchy of events and bubble up means that they does the leave uh, if it emits an event it can be captured in the other node. For instance, if a cell in a table emits an event, it, it, it bubbles up to the table itself. But right now I don't have the hierarchy, right? So I'm just hacking this for you just to show you the principles. Now, window at event listener, and I would like to subscribe for event, and then I can specify lambda or fat arrow function in JavaScript, and I can say uh, this on Duke arrived and passed the Duke so and now I can have this and this is actually this is already unidirectional uh, data flow almost what I'm doing I'm just calling asynchronous functions and what I get back events and the interesting part is these events are available to all components not only to my component okay and sometimes if we get crazy complex applications you can combine this with Redux what we can absolutely do, we can conform, um, convert the uh, standard custom events to Redux actions. Okay? Questions on Duke. This on Duke. It's too long. Arrived with event and console log Duke uh, event and say my Duke. And the Duke arrived or not loaded. Uh, so loaded uh, fetch Duke. This on Duke. My <coughs> huh. So now it is there. Um, and um, yeah. Now, even interesting part, so const, we have this event, and wait a second, so if I do this uh, once again, 
uh, we have the custom event. And what I know is the only thing which matters is detail. So actually, I could do this, right? I can say destructuring, which is really great. I can say, do it here. Uh, detail, and now I will see the payload. So I can here and say detail. And I will see the payload here. So uh, Duke. And I can even say I'm only interested in what was a name on H, const name H, and equals detail. And with that, I can use name H. And uh, now, if, so if I click, you will see uh, detail payload. This was uh, detail payload, I think. You see, uh, Duke, Duke, ah, so we have my Duke, where is it, my Duke, Duke 18, so this is a little bit misleading. So, so now we have completely asynchronous uh, server call, which distributes, distributes the events to all other components. And uh, what we usually do, we don't hard code this like this. What you can do, oh, sorry, what you could do you can go to the service, and in the service, for instance, say um, that uh, you can specify a constant with the duke, and then reuse the constant if you have the service, right? So you cannot mistype the name. Questions? So what you saw a lot already, we had uh, lit HTML. By the way, routing, trivial. The next question, what about routing? There are great routers, like, for instance, Vadin router, which are a component itself. So this is a no dependency single JavaScript file or which does some routing. So uh, if you have no questions, which I, uh, how much time do we have? 15 minutes, right? So question, would you like to see router or CSS layout? Who is for router? Who is for layout, grid layout? No layout. So in Java developers, everyone would like to see the, uh, the uh, layout and not the router. But Let's try the router. So Vadin router, single dependency, no post-processing is just there. So do documentation, very good. So uh, Vadin router. It looks like a router, but it's uh, very simple. So and uh, and how it looks like is this. So you need an, uh, but this is somehow, it looks like that. So we have links, and we can react to the links. And what you can see here on the right side, that every link here, every link is going to be displayed as a component. This is the basic idea of the router, right? So let's try this. I will just copy the router here. And, but this looks a little bit strange, wait a second. Look like old version, but the code is right. So Vadin router. This is this is what I wanted to show. This is better. So we just need this. We have to import router with that, and this is what I meant. The only thing which you have to be aware aware of, this doesn't work in a browser. So what we use, we have rollup. Rollup is a great modern build tool, rollup JS. Uh, Rollup JS. And what the Rollup JS does, it understands already a six modules. And what we do is we um, pre process uh, old, uh, old, any dependencies we like. And this Rollup replaces this add with a relative path, which can be directly understood by the browser. Okay, this is the only thing we do. So we do this. Uh, this is not necessary for the router because it comes without any dependencies. And lit HTML is also already modern. But with all the libraries, we do this. We have to do this. It's one called rollup minus C. So we have that. We have the router. And now the following problem. So we have here the Java rocks. So we need the Java rocks component, Java rocks uh, JS. And uh, I will just copy this. Oh, I will just copy the um, Java rocks component here. So Java rocks, Java rocks. Then in AppJS, I would like to, in AppJS, to import 
just import Java rocks, Java rocks, it should be there, uh, and always JS. So this is what the browser understands, and all browsers. So there's a little bit of refactoring, and now I can add my router. So where is the code? Just uh, not profile. Go away. And this is good. So this is a very simple one. And uh, so now let's try this. So we router, not from this, rather than from Vadin router here locally. Vadin router. Vadin router JS. So uh, outlet. So this is your old school JavaScript. So outlet. So we have no outlet. So I will just say here uh, main. Should be the outlet. And then what I can do in the app.js, I can say document query selector and uh, main. And this query selector replaces, unfortunately, jQuery. So we have this. Um, now we have this set router router. Very good. So and uh, now we have, let's say, Java. Java and JavaScript. And here, uh, this was Java rocks. Java rocks. And then here, it already works. It's interesting. Uh, let's say uh, JS is OK. OK, so this is, uh, then we have this uh, Java rocks and Java rocks. So now this is just default route JavaScript. So what you just need is another component. And uh, copy paste. Very important in JavaScript as well. So we have here, and this was uh, JS rocks. Let's say, okay, so JS rocks. And this one will just say this in a HTML. More and more like Java. Some people get got angry on the internet. I said this, okay, how well, we can tell us and uh, Java is crap and JavaScript is so nice. Okay. Now, so we have this and uh, we don't need here and this is uh, JS rocks and we have to be careful here. Uh, JS rocks and JS rocks. So you have to rename the compo uh, component JS rocks, JS rocks, JS rocks. Yeah, I know it. Uh, and then in app.js, I have JS rocks. Rocks. So now um, almost, so I need some links. And let's do, um, so, and the first one is um, Java, Java, then uh, JS, JS, and this is default. So uh, I forgot actually app. This is this Java. So we have JS. It's not proper. Ah, you're right. Thank you. Import uh, JS rocks. J S. So um, and then reload that. Wait a second. Yeah. And now, wait a second. So uh, default JS and Java. So we have router without any NPM with the post processing and the changes, I would say, four times a year. So this is a powerful uh, router with even child, co child components, uh, not child components, um, child, child routes, and uh, how does call it the parameters? I forgot the name, so I'll show you what, what I mean. So what I could do, I could say here, JS uh, message. Then in JS rocks, I think, uh, let's see whether it will work. I could just go here and say, Uh, this location, I think it's location, location, loc it gets injected, location parameters, 
message. Hopefully. So we have JS default and this JS with what was it? Message. So what what happens? The router injects I think location is this location and parameters and then you can access whatever it is. Let's see whether we get this working and um and for that Let's create here another one and call it nice, nice chess. So do it the last time. Uh, nice chess, undefined, and uh, location, lo location params, not parameters. You see, I was too chatty. I'm Java developers, they're always verbose. So um, this is uh, JS rocks. This was not parameters rather than params. Params. Do it again. So, and let's see. So we have default, nice. This is object. And the object was message, I think message so again nice and more so this was parameter passing to the routes what the router also comes with is uh, lifecycle pre-route guards so if you would like to have authorization authentication everything is built in the thing is I'm not depending on Vardin I'm just using one component from Vardin from f and they can use whatever router I like and uh, by the way, it is very easy to build your own uh, router. You only need hash change event. So we actually did uh, because of security reasons. So we had, uh, we should, depending on user and authorization on the server, we had to display different things differently. So it was very easy to build your own router. It's roughly 50 lines of JavaScript. It's not like, you know, you have to build uh, tons of frameworks. So we have, I think, seven minutes left. So questions. Do we have any questions? If not, I do a little bit layout. Yes. Yeah, for the simple cases, so Redux we use once for complex application. For everything else, state management, so we have, you saw already the service, and by the way, we use packages like boundary control entity. This is an old old pattern, so we have, uh, the component is the presentation. Service goes to server, a uh, service goes to server usually. And the model is a uh, JavaScript object with a singleton, a JSON, with a state of the view. Now, if it has to be persistent, you can easily store it in uh, session storage, for instance. And this is good enough. And Redux is more about you have crazy, like mediator pattern, you have crazy interactions between individual components. And this is why we use uh, more Redux. I s never start with Redux because you have to, to write a lot of code. You know, you have to, 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 to write the reducers, the JSON actions, and this is, uh, no one likes that actually. Right. I think there's another one called Meiosis. Pardon? No, uh, usually what we do, really, we don't use any external dependencies okay. in the front end. Okay, no, never heard about this. I, I will look it up. How it's called? My meiosis? Yes. Oh, then I have to look it up. Uh, meiosis? It's not a disease. Cool. I will look at it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you a lot. So, uh, didn't you know about that? Yes? How would you add that one test to the Ha, huh, Cypress. Cypress.js rocks. And uh, we installed Cypress as individual NPM dependency. And, um, and uh, we use it on Jenkins CI, as in my case, is almost always Jenkins. And the cool story with Cypress is, by the way, no Cypress. Um, Uh, effective uh, Cypress. Uh, I don't know what this is, but let's uh, in Cypress. This is basically a Chrome um, Cypress bin Cypress. 
And if you say open, it should open, hopefully. This is an old example. This is what I didn't want it to show you, actually. And the cool story is um, I can run now the tests here and say action spec, and it will open the browser a, and, and run the tests. And the cool story with Cypress is it comes with all the, you know, assert libraries like BDD, Chai, Sinon.js, and Mocha is everything included. And on, on, on Jenkins, we can run in uh, headless mode. And uh, sometimes we record videos and we have reporters. So this is what we do. But Cypress has nothing to do with web standards. But the cool story is in web standards, everything is DOM. So it's very easy to test with Cypress.js. And we don't use Selenium because Selenium has race conditions and uh, we don't like it, race conditions. Okay, and why Cypress doesn't have such, because Cypress runs in memory uh, where the application runs. So you can even, for instance, for state management, you can go to the service, it will mod modify your state, so you can access via Cypress the directly the state and assert that, which is uh, harder with uh, Selenium. Some, someone ask a question? Uh, yes, uh, can you somehow manage pop-ups in Cypress? Uh, uh, depending what, what, what are, uh, what, what, what I don't know whether if you if if you if there is a way in Chrome, I would try in Chrome first without Cypress in the console to try to get you know a reference to the to the window. If it is possible, you can do it with Cypress, because what you can also do with Cypress, you what you get, uh, how is called? Um, this is like how they do this. Get right. It starts a CY dot get. You get the element. What you get back is actually a JavaScript wrapper, and with shoot. It unwraps and you get the, the whole to the native DOM element. If there is a way to get uh, the, the reference to the native DOM element, you can do this. If not, it's technically impossible. So what you do, we, we test Shadow DOM. I skipped Shadow DOM for you. So what, what's really interesting is, for instance, I have here a component. Wait a second. Uh, this was Cypress, but uh, tabulator. This was actually a proof of concept. What it does is it wraps a, a JavaScript uh, tabulator as a, a nice grid. As an, it doesn't look nice first because of CSS, but it's a very simple grid. And uh, it's popular. You can very easily create uh, grids with sorting, filters, virtual, whatever you imagine. This is an open source framework based on nothing. It's just a DOM. And um, if you look at this, um, if you go to elements, you will see that this tabulator here is works with Shadow DOM. So the cool story is I loaded the whole uh, no, DOM, uh, the, uh, the tabulator, and the CSS to Shadow DOM, and it cannot escape. So this uh, tabulator CSS cannot destroy the application. So I skipped the Shadow DOM. The problem with Shadow DOM is how to test that, because you cannot directly access the element from Cypress. But you can go, what I said, through DOM, and then access the Shadow, and this works perfectly. So there's a trick. OK? So now, um, and by the way, this tabulator is just an example. In another example, we use data tables. And by the way, if we take a look on this, how easy it is, um, there is a tabulator table. And this is my component, HTML element. The only difference is to today is I'm using attached shadow here, mode open. And then I say, hey, tabulator in HTML. And I say, tabulator, this is like, I think it's even based on jQuery, no idea. It's just a single dependency. And I say, hey, tabulator, render itself to here. And now I have, you know, my a web component, a very powerful table uh, with uses something inside I don't even know. And this something inside cannot escape because of Shadow DOM. Shadow is also a standard. So this is what I'm doing currently. And um, I'm actually deleting lots of projects. Uh, not React, because the React developers are very satisfied with React. So, and, and at the end of the day, it will look like React. But uh, it's very easy to convince Angular developers not to do Angular. So this is what, uh, what actually happens in my projects. We move away from Angular and everything else. And if someone likes React, it's React. And uh, the, the difference is uh, React is heavily used by Facebook. So they have no breaking changes. So this, I think React is a different story. Okay. Questions? So what I can tell you? Learn the standards, learn once, never migrate. It's fun, so you only have to incrementally learn. And all the fancy, funky framework is not as, that exciting as you might think. Uh, the added value to clients is not always you know, there. 
and uh, life is exciting without learning you know crazy stuff uh, every other day so this is what i can tell you and uh, i think we are over time if you don't have questions if you like stickers at least i forgot the real stickers my podcast stickers you can have one on your notebooks javascript people like stickers and java developers begin to love them as well so uh, thank you and see you at java conferences probably then